Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Cult of the Deep by BA Games. Cult of the Deep is a hidden role slash team game in which you're going to be playing as a cultist in attempts to gain a bit of power in your cult's faction. Will you go against the grain and attack the high priest, or will you be the faithful protecting the high priest at all costs? There's certain victory conditions for each of the different types of cultists out there. They're going to be getting their own role, their own character, and they're going to be getting a sigil that they can use once per game, a very powerful ability, and they're going to attempt to control the game by utilizing their die by gaining rituals. You'll roll dice, you'll place those die in certain areas around the game, whether it be to attack a player, to gain health for yourself or for somebody else, or to use the other three faces of the die in order to specifically move along rituals down a track. These rituals can be beneficial or hurtful to the players depending on how long they last in the game and who utilizes what die in what way to gain those cards. Gaining cards is going to allow you to either have a one-shot ability, a permanent ability, or you'll simply gain an ability when you utilize your die and assign them to specific rituals. The game will end when one of the victory conditions is triggered on one of the cultists' cards, and when that happens, the player who has dominated will be the winner, or the team who has dominated will be the winner, depending on what you're playing as. Let's take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how it plays, then we're going to come up and me and Ashley will review the game, tell you what we thought about it, and whether you should pick it up on Kickstarter, and finally our outro. Welcome to the game Cult of the Deep, and here is everything included. However, this is a prototype, so the pieces will change. These die here are obviously stickered, but as you can see, they did send me some of the production quality die here, as well as the coins are metal as opposed to the wooden ones that I am currently using, and the rest here is prototype material. In the game, you're going to be receiving roll cards, character cards, you're going to be receiving sigils and these ritual cards, as well as wraith cards. You're also going to be getting a handful of dice here, a bunch of coins, and these crack and die, as well as the ritual boards here, some bags, the rules, and of course the box. In the game, everybody's going to be assigned a roll, and it's going to be based on the number of players. You'll look into this book here, you'll flip it open, you'll check the game setup and see how many players you're playing with, take those rolls aside, remove the rest, shuffle them up and deal one face down to every player. Then the high priest will reveal, gain their bonus health, and you'll move on to your character cards. Everybody's going to get one of these at random, shuffle them up and deal them, and then reveal them. These will be your HP throughout the game, your special bonus die symbol that you can use to gain health, and a special ability. Everybody's also going to get a sigil. These guys are one-time per use game effects that are face down that you will repeat reveal whenever you would like to use them based on when they say you can use them. Shuffle the ritual deck and deal one face up in each of the areas presented on the ritual boards based on the number of ritual boards based on the number of players. And then set aside the wraith cards. These are going to be used upon death and these are a way for players to come back in the game and pot potentially win utilizing the wraith abilities. Give every single player five dice, set aside the coins within reach as well as these crack and die, and then you're pretty much ready to begin the game. To begin the game, you're simply going to choose a player and then you are going to basically have them roll dice. Dice. You'll have them take five die and they're going to roll. So you'll roll. From rolling the die, you're then going to assign. Now the die have three specific altar slash ritual symbols, which will be found here. And uh, you're also going to have get health gain as well as damage. Damage can be in the form of one or two damage, depending on whether it has a double a dagger or a single dagger. You'll see that these markers are on these boards as well, which is part of setup. Based on the number of players, you will assign markers indicated by the different symbols on the ritual cards. If they only have one, put one marker. If they have two, place both. In this case, we have a six player example. So and we have these two symbols here. They're both having markers at six. This one here at the top for, for six as well. Oops. And then this one at the top for six. Then you can choose to assign. So you'll roll these die here. You'll have an opportunity to roll twice more. And you can place these guys either on the ritual boards themselves, based on if they have that symbol there, or you can place it on a player if they have either the attack or the health gain symbol. So for instance, if I wanted to gain a health, I'd place that on my character. If I wanted to do two damage to another player, I'd place that on that player over there. And then if I wanted to assign these guys to this specific uh, card here, I would then have one die left. I could go ahead and roll this die. And then if I wanted to, I could assign it as well. And like I said, you can, like Yahtzee, you can re-roll up to three times. 
after you've rolled and then committed the dice, placing them either on a player, yourself, or another player, as well as on these boards here, you're going to see if anybody wants to respond. Players can choose to respond by playing cards or using abilities to maneuver dice around the board, as well as making you recommit them by either re-rolling them or simply by placing them on somebody else. After the response phase is over, then it's time to resolve, and you will resolve each fairly simply. If it's on a player, give them health or take away health, and then move the die away. If it's on a board, you'll move that tracker down based on the number of die you have committed. So this will go from six to four, and then you would gain the alter ability. This one here says you can roll a die, and then based on what you roll, something unique will happen. Over here, you're gonna just assign this, this one here, which is assigned to here. This will move uh, down one, and you'll gain one coin. So the player would simply gain a coin from that one there. If these boards ever hit zero on both or on the singular symbol, you're going to gain the card if it's a keeper. If it's not a keeper, it's gonna go in the discard pile. Some keepers last the entire game, others are a one-shot use that you can use once and they go into the discard pile. When one of these guys is removed because their track goes to zero, either place it over here or as a keeper in front of you and then put out a new one and then assign the marker based on the number of players. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. You're going to do that and move on to the next player. They're going to roll their five dice, assign the die, check to see if anybody wants to respond, and then resolve those dice. And your objective is to gain these cards here, stop them from doing damage to you, as well as achieve your goal. And every single roll has a unique goal, whether it be to eliminate all the Cabalists and Heretics, whether it be to eliminate the High Priest, or whether it be to be the only person left standing, which is kind of like a middleman. There's also another variant as well of different types of play. Each of these characters here have a unique HP base, as well as a unique ability, and their bonus symbol. So in general, whenever you want to heal up, up, you're going to need this life symbol here. However, if you roll something like this for this guy, he can gain health with that specific symbol. It's a nice way to specifically give yourself life when rolling that symbol and utilizing these sigils of power. If you ever hit zero health, you're not out of the game. What's actually going to happen is you'll take one of these cards here, and upon death, you'll gain a benefit as well as a unique ability uh, that you'll be utilizing on other people's turns. So when it's time to assign dice, you can assign your die to those players. And when it's your turn, you'll be rolling the number of die here, and then you'll be able to utilize them throughout the game, still trying to achieve your goal. If any of this ritual deck ever runs out, you're going to reshuffle the discard pile and start again. And the game will trigger an end upon the, either the high priest dying or one of the other uh, win conditions or lose conditions happening throughout this game. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Will your team come to victory or or will it fall under control of the High Priest uh, once again? Let's come up and me and Ashley will discuss the game, we'll give you a review of the game, and then we'll finish up with our outro. So let's discuss Cult of the Deep. Uh, this game is a trader team-based game in which you're playing as the High Priest or his subordinates, and you're trying to defeat all the heretics, uh, the people who are kind of against you, or you're playing as the um, subord the subs faithful, the faithful mm -hmm. who are trying to kind of counteract these guys here. And you're doing so by either simply attacking them straight up, utilizing your die. Each die is going to heal or do damage, and you can also use three of the other sides of the die to complete rituals, which I think is the main portion of the game. It's where you're trying to gather the Kraken, or prevent damage to all players, or gain some type of benefit. Some of them are lasting effects, some of them last instantly, uh, um, or, or one-shots, and some of them are simply you gain the benefit when you put the die on there. It'll say, oh, you get to do this or that, or heal or do damage. But in general, the idea is kind of like this uh, Yahtzee style variant where you're rolling the dice, assigning them, having them respond, and then afterwards you'll go in order to whatever you want to damage the players, finding out who that high priest, uh, uh, some people who are working with the high priest, and of course the high priest finding out who's against you. And it becomes this kind of game or battle of wits. Um, overall, gameplay works really well for this game. It doesn't feel necessarily like a trader game more than it feels like a team-based game. Yeah. So you're specifically uh, trying to figure out who is on your team uh, while at the same time trying to keep that priest alive or, or possibly kill him if, if, if need be. And what's really unique about this game specifically is the rituals, right? That's, that's the most engrossing part of the game is how you choose to roll the die and where you choose to assign them. And do you want to bulk yourself up to be powerful late game to which you can then 
accomplish your goals or do you want to go straight for the throat instantly you can choose to do that which takes away a little bit of the hidden aspect of the game mm -hmm. but it gives you that option right and different characters require different wins uh, another interesting thing that's cool, cool is on death you know you don't know what i mean with on death yeah like the problems of of a lot of these games is when you die in a trader based game where you actually can kill the player they're eliminated from the game they can no longer play but in this one here, you actually will get to come back uh, alive and you'll be, get to do something. Like, for instance, you'll have all these different guys here, Malice, Envy, Wrath. Uh, and basically, they'll give you a certain die that you can use that you can apply on other players' turns. So you can still participate in the game. And there's still a victory condition uh, that you can obtain even after you've died on your character card. Uh, the artwork. Excellent artwork. I think it works really great for this Cthulian Lovecraftian style. It's dark. It's a little, like you said, vivid, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got a great uh, quality to it as well. I mean, what do you think about the artwork? Is I really liked it. And it's a prototype, which is even crazier because all the cards look super nice already. Yeah. So... so all of this is a prototype, obviously. The die are, are stuck on there, with the, so it's going to be higher quality. We actually have a lot of the actual components that's going to look like, like these etched die, beautiful quality. Um, speaking of that too, quality of the game. While it is a prototype, they made sure to send us the different types of coins and the die that will be utilized in the game so I can see the improvement of quality just based off of what they've given us here. Right. We actually have these coins that obviously there's not enough to play in, in the base game with these, so they actually gave us some coin tokens and whatnot. But to see these and know that they're going to be so excellent, I'm I'm very impressed. And they're heavy. They're Yeah, they're heavy. They feel like real coins. You can hear yeah. the, the clanking of the coins. I like holding coins in games. It feels good to move these around. And you get a good amount of them as, as well. And uh, there's a lot of extra components for the variants in the game, too. If you want, you can include the extra coins um, for the different modes of play, So, which gives a good amount of replayability. Uh, what do you think about the classes? Do you remember what your, your class was? Yeah, it was the Faithful. The Faithful? Mm -hmm. And each of them have their own unique ability as well. So, for instance, if you have like the Faithful and you also have like the Librarian, this one tells you how much health you have during your response. You can change any uh, die roll of this type to... Uh, another type, which is really powerful. So you get to make wild edges on some of them. Others will give you more health. The high priest starts with additional health to keep them alive. And so each player that you're playing with feels different. And then of course, when you attach on the sigils, your one time per use game abilities, they can present quite a unique twist as well. Uh, if you like team-based games, this is one I would suggest you taking a look at, provided you understand that this is not as much of a trader-based game as it is more deduction, and a lot of the game involves rolling and manipulating those die to deal with the different rituals on the board. Uh, what, yeah. what about you? What do you think? Do you think this is like something that you'd pick up for as a trader-based game, or...? Um, I don't really think it's traitor yeah. as much, but it definitely is like hidden roll. Like, you don't know who anybody is except for the high priest. And it's nice, actually, being the faithful because you have the most information. You actually know who the high priest is, and you know that everybody else is against you and that person. So And there's also the, cool. the heretic. There's the two other characters, too, um, uh, up to two, that are kind of working with whoever is not doing the, the, the best. Because they... I mean, let's see. It's the... What's, what's it vengeful. called? It's called the Vengeful Heretic. And it says you win if you're the last cultist alive or if everyone else dies. But if you die upon the high priest's death while you and at least one other Kabbalist survives. So your style of play and your change as to how you want to work will, will differ depending on if you're alive or dead. And with this guy, I have to... I was playing as the Vengeful Heretic. I wanted to keep the other team who's doing better uh, down in check, and so I would switch back and forth, which made it difficult to determine if I was the faithful or not, up until the point where the you know the the, the player starts attacking directly the the, the high priest, and right. then it's instantly known. Um, but yeah, overall an enjoyable game, high quality components. I expect high quality for all, from all this game after just seeing the components they've given me, and that uh, it, it expands. It plays I think four to eight players, yeah. which has a ton of variability. And I don't think you're ever gonna be playing the same class as well as the same one of these sigils here and then of course if you die switching to one of the entities that are going to allow you to do unique abilities throughout the game yeah which was really cool and it happened when we played too yep 
Yeah, so. we, we played with pretty much all of these things throughout the uh, entire experience. I, I brought Ashley in because she likes trader-based games. She likes team-based games, hidden role-based games. It's probably, probably the only like really aggressive style game that um, she kind of enjoys playing, whereas like things that are like more take that are not your style. But a game like this, which is probably the most aggressive, because it's specifically aggressive, uh, it's something that you enjoy. It's more social. I yeah. think that's why. Yeah. And do you think this game ring brings that social aspect out? Oh, yeah. You know, there's still, there was a point where, I can't remember who it was, but somebody else had tried to portray themselves as the faithful. And it was interesting because I didn't want to out myself, but at the same time, I'm like, okay. Well. It might benefit you to keep them around. Right. And of course, the ability to choose to save cards and utilize them later, or, or, or gain those more powerful cards and like make deals throughout the game, mm -hmm. things that you didn't think you would want to do with players who are against you can kind of, you'll end up kind of doing that to working together. More players is better. Yeah. Obviously, I want to play with five or more players in this game. Four is, you know, I, I just rather play with more players. I think it brings up the social aspect more. It brings more interesting uh, choices that you make and finding out who's on what team and whatnot. But yeah, overall, Cult of the Deep, an excellent little game. I had a lot of fun with it. If you like die rolling games, kind of like Dark Moon with a little bit of a twist, it's a little bit lighter on on that scale, as well as something that's team based like the Resistance. This is definitely one you should check out with the Cthulian HP Lovecraft style artwork. Yeah. I really liked it. I think it's worth a buy. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Cult of the Deep. If you're interested, link down below in the description currently on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We've got tons of stuff coming up. And uh, there's also a giveaway you can find on there for the game Plunder. Another thing to note too is subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you can see more videos just like this one showing you new Kickstarter games coming out all the time. I think you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised with a lot of the great content we've got coming out. And I look forward to seeing you guys on our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. You can watch us play games live. I think you guys are going to kick out of it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to... See you guys next time. Oh, and the, and the Patreon list. Thank you, Patreons. Patrons. Patreons? Uh, all right. See you tonight. Your victory conditions may or may not change, and you'll be su uh, supporting player. God damn it. God damn it. Our game shuffle the deck deal out five to everybody uh to each player flip these oh oh burp and fit that's what i get for drinking some seltzer water before but it's kind of its own unique universe as well there's no actual like hp lovecraft